and once again we get disconnected we've been disconnected junior I feel like a Bond villain at the moment, you know, with a, except it's not a white cat. <laughs> he quite enjoys having his eye, just over his eyes there, um, stroked. But he's, he's got to get used to, used to it. If you just go up to him and do it, of course, he shies away. So you got to wait until he's a bit happy like this. And then, then he kind of loves having just, just over his eyes brushed uh, with your fingers. Right, I'm going to try Junior. To see if I can do some pyrography with you sit on my knee, which is going to be challenging. So I don't know, guys. Would you rather see pyrography, or would you rather watch the pussy cat? Because <laughs> it might come to a choice. Yes, it might, Junior. It might come to a choice. Probably will. You're feeling a bit skittish, aren't you? You're not quite settled. Hopefully you should be back, uh, uh, Grier. I um, I have no idea what's going on. It's a straight disconnect. It's not like I'm dropping frames and then, you know, OBS or somebody goes, oh well, you know, it's, it's too bad a connection. Let's try again. It just is a straight bang. It's gone and comes back. You know, OBS waits ten seconds, but it's a straight reconnect, and, and within a couple of seconds of it reconnecting, we we're back up thirty frames a second, solid. 1.6 uh, megabits per second upload and uh, away it goes. Now then, Junior, are you going to let me carry on with what, well, I was about to say with what these good people want to see. But these good people might actually want to see you more than me. And if you do, I can turn the big camera on in, by the way, rather than the little one, <laughs> if you'd prefer that. Welcome to the cat stroking stream. Now that's laid back. <laughs> stroking cats and dogs, well any pets actually, it's supposed to be good for your heart. It, it relaxes your heart and, uh, and lowers your blood pressure and lowers your uh, pulse rate. So it's supposed to be very good for you. Now Junior, who is um, doesn't purr very often, he's just starting to now. He's just very quietly purring. Unfortunately, I don't think you'll hear him. But um, he's not. He's not a cat for purring. It was about two years um, after he moved in before we even heard him purr for the first time. He just wouldn't purr, no matter what he did. Stroke him for hours um, when he'd let you, and he still wouldn't um, wouldn't purr. These days he's, he, he does a bit sometimes and occasionally he gets quite loud as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I will try and do some pyrography. Um, if I do, if I do, it's, it is more than possible. What he'll do is he'll jump up and go away. Um, but uh, we shall see. He's had a 
he's had a stroke and he's had a sit for a while so he won't be too upset uh, I know if he uh, he can't settle on me straight away uh, he'll he'll get he'll get sort of upset and he just won't come back for for a few days but he's had he's had a chance to sit down for a while now so all cats love their ears especially just just inside there not actually poking your finger inside but just on the side of the skull they all love that and, and occasionally around the back of the ears but they all love, love just around the ear uh, there no yeah that and the um, the cheek the cheeks as well because they've got scent glands on the cheeks which is why cats rub, rub faces with each other or you see cats rubbing the faces on uh, on furniture or trees and things and they're spreading scent glands so when you rub the side of the face there you're stimulating the scent glands and uh, apart from you getting their scent on you and you're transferring your scent to them which is a friendly thing um, it also um, it's kind of like um, oh no careful it's kind of like um, makes them a little bit sort of um, relaxed shall we say it's a bit sort of like a massage or sort of thing yeah he's almost purring he's not quite he actually almost looked like he was about to try and nip me hand then. <laughs> Which he still does occasionally. He usually won't, won't bite down. He'll just put his teeth on you. But sometimes if you're doing something he isn't quite like. He'll do that. Or sometimes he gets too excited. And uh, he'll then just. Um, it's a bit like a kitten play. He'll just put, uh, spin his head around. And put his teeth on you. Without biting. But um, And of course the trick at that point. Is not to pull your hand away. Because if you do he will bite. Um, it's kind of just the way the mouths work and things. But um, yeah, let me blow these cat hairs off of here. Because if I don't, and I put the pyro tool on them, they smell. <laughs> yes, hello. <laughs> it seems like quite a few people have joined. Perhaps to watch the kitty. <laughs> Are you going to be all right if I put a wire on your back? Yeah, not too bad. Okay. No, you're not, are you? You're interested in what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the trick of pyrography with a pussy cat on your knee. I'm going to have to work upside down. Hello. Now, of course, I've just put my arm in the way, haven't I? Ah, oh, dear. Yeah, you want... No, that's what he does when he wants stroking. He actually asks in a way like that. Enough, and often actually with Junior here, if you want to stroke him, you're best to ask his permission first. Now that might sound daft, but uh, what you do is you just put your head hand near him like this. And if he wants stroking, and he's not sure, what he'll do is he'll do that. He'll put his head under your hand or put his, um, put his muzzle to you. Uh, and that's permission to, be, to stroke him. And that way he won't have a go at you. <laughs> Hey, now then. No, no, no. You're getting excited. You're getting a bit excited if you're doing that. You might have just caught him opening his mouth there. He's getting a little bit um, excited and, that, and potentially a little bit aggressive there. Almost certainly that means he's kind of had enough for a while. He can just um, he can just chill and then come. he can go back to him and uh, stroke him again a bit later. So I'm going to do something I don't often do, and I don't usually do, and it's not tilt the camera, it's, I'm going to try and do this left handed. <laughs> now this could be a complete disaster, but luckily I'm not doing any fine details, so, and I've just turned the pyro down a little bit, so that I don't, uh, but otherwise um, I can't really do this at all with him on my knee. 
it almost certainly jumped straight up so we'll 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 chill out we'll slow down a little bit and uh and do it uh, left-handed now you stay that's him looking to see why you're not stroking him even though he just tried to bite to say he'd had enough you had enough you going you sitting yes that's an elephant <laughs> ah, crackers, aren't I? Talk to pussy cats. Now he's thinking about it. Are you going to lay down again? That's what I was saying earlier. Sometimes he'll, he'll stand up, and then uh, if you don't stroke him, he'll go. And uh, if he lays down again, he's all right for a while until he wants you to stop, and then then he'll want stroking again. And Hmm. Oh, you're going to try and lay down. Yeah, he's actually, I thought he was actually going to try and curl up then. Not quite. All right, there you go. So we'll just move the camera so these people can see the pussy cat. <laughs> yeah. It, um, it, 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 it this picture actually reminds me a little bit of um, one of the Minecraft streamers I watch. Well, she does other things as well. Uh, from time to time is uh, Marvelara, and um, people pestered her for a face cam for long enough. And uh, what she uh, what she eventually did was find a, a gif of a cat typing on the keyboard, a cartoon cat, and puts that up. That's her face cam. And if anybody um, anybody says, "Why have you got a you know this cat?" she say, "It's my face cam." And a lot of people will go um, immediately will answer something like, "But you're not a cat." And she'll then a usual response is something along the lines of. Uh, when you're on the internet, nobody knows you're a cat. <laughs> so, and it's a bit like this. I'm talking, and there's a cat in the face cam. <laughs> but you can't see his mouth. So you don't know if he's actually moving his mouth or not. So what I'm going to do here is just stroke him enough, but not too much, so he doesn't get excited. Uh, and start trying to bite me but enough so that he doesn't start standing up all in the meantime uh, doing uh, pyrography left-handed which is in itself a challenge that I've never attempted before it's a good job I'm not doing details actually daft as it sounds though I kind of feel like I possibly could um, not having a great deal of problem doing this. It's a bit like it is a bit like rubbing your stomach and patting your head at the same time, though. Uh, trying to stroke the cat and um, and move uh, move this tool. And of course. Well, I say of course, but unless you've got cats, quite often they're molting and, and to some extent our cats around here do seem to molt quite a lot or continuously, especially around spring, summertime. And uh, their fur gets everywhere, including all over my mouth and face. Because it just flies, and of course you're breathing, so it comes towards you. But it sort of tickles you, and ugh, you get hairs in your mouth. <laughs> oh dear.
My wife used to write kind of a di a daily cat diary, but that's a diary of that's the diary that the cat would keep if it kept a diary. Uh, for some of our cats, and I could quite imagine her doing something here along the lines of, um, you know, uh, Junie had been a ventriloquist and, and sort of working this human who's doing some artwork while he's laid there on camera, looking like he's, you know, keeping his jaw shut, you can't see him talking, anything like that, you know, so. Uh, uh, It would probably make a uh, make her a good story for uh, a day, uh, a, da a diary, a daily diary entry. <laughs> oh dear, uh, synchronized stroking and um, and pyrography at the moment. Lizard Cell, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Uh, yes, it's taken a little bit of a back seat and slowed down a little bit now. Um, if you uh, if you're looking at it thinking the picture's reversed because um, you're seeing somebody doing something left-handed, uh, it's because it's not reversed and I am doing it left-handed. I'm not going to be able to carry on for much longer, I don't think. But they're uh, left-handed, that is. If I swap to my right hand, um, you you can't have the you can't have the camera on the cat anymore. Now yeah, then, that looks a bit better. I'm making a few dark marks because I'm using my left hand here more than my right, but um, it's an elephant's trunk. It's not fantastically uh, a problem. It's part of, it is going to be part of the texture, so. I think he's going to sleep. Sorry I can't focus any better than that. It's it's totally on its own, autofocus, nothing I can do about it. Why left handed? Any particular reason? Yeah, it's precisely that. Well, sort of that. Um if I don't stroke him occasionally, he will get up and start walking around. And then you guys don't get to see him. If I use my right hand, it's in front of the camera. So you can't get to see him anyway. Um, and if I use my right, well, um, if I try and do it over his back, then the wire goes over his back and that bothers him uh, as I tried. And uh, it bothers him a bit too much. He'll get up and go away. So um, it's, uh, it's left-handed in an effort to uh, allow you guys to watch a pussycat whilst you're seeing an elephant um, made into pyrography. It's making it a bit slow, uh, and I hope you don't mind. Um, I mean, if you really, if it does bother you, um, me being a bit slow or, or using left hand or something like that, we can persuade you and you there's other places to go. But it's been, um, in the past two weeks, he's been on my knee. This is the third time, only the first time when I've been streaming. Um, and the other two times, it was sort of a, a two-minute visit whilst I was at work, so... It's kind of nice to have him around, but I don't mind him persuading him to be elsewhere if uh, if you would prefer. And in some ways, it is an interesting challenge doing bits of this left-handed because. 
there are times when it would be quite useful to do things left-handed but just because of the angles involved especially with bigger pieces of wood the littler ones you can spin around the bigger they get the harder it becomes so you see you're turning this into a learning exercise as well Nearly. And this tool actually is a bit dirty. Because of the because of the cat hair, it's carbonizing and the hair a little bit and melting and it gets a bit gritty. Yeah, they do. Cats definitely rule the world. Um, they do it, do it from the background, though. Shh, you know, shh, don't tell anybody. Here I am, because I put my finger to my mouth and shushing, and of course, I don't have the face cam anymore. <laughs> the pussy cat's got the face cam. You can sort of maybe see something in the background. His it's it's, it's, it's head's gradually dropping, which is how I know he's going to sleep. You just move. Oops, it is. I was trying to make the camera uh, tilt down a little bit. So. But when I do that, I've got to find something to prop it up with. Um, does it? Ooh, I must be getting really intelligent then. <laughs> uh, does it work fast? <laughs> I've been doing this for about 20 minutes so uh, have I got really intelligent by now <laughs> I think it's self-evident the fact that I haven't <laughs> by the fact that I'm asking the question Now I've got a vaguely visible outline around this uh, tusk so what I've got to do is just darken the skin around there until that vaguely visible outline disappears. Because that was, that was a vague outline I drew myself right at the start in order to uh, assist me in placement of things. And I do it, do it using the pyrography tool so that it doesn't show up as a different colour and or show up as a uh, an embedded pencil line that's got varnish over the top of it. Not doing too bad. Uh, you're trying to make a flat kumahimo braid. Kumahimo braid. That's one I've not heard of. I've looked a bit, of, uh, um, but I've not heard of one of those. You uh, are you going to show us what that's like tomorrow, uh, AD Fall Guy? Or? Guys, anybody who's watching doesn't uh, doesn't know of Eddie Fall Guy. He makes uh, chain mail jewellery uh, and other chain mail related uh, items. 
uh, like belts and bags and phone, well, maybe phone cases. Um, so definitely worth checking out. And uh, Kumohimo braid sounds like the sort of thing that might be used for something like a watch strap or something like that. Which he also does. Okay. An inset day from school. That sounds like it's meant to be something special, um, but sounds more like they're just having the day off. <laughs> Or they're going to try and just have the day off. Uh, okay, that's not bad. I'm looking at my outgoing stream window actually. And uh, I'm just looking at this sort of shadow that I created here. Ah, uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all because there's sort of some more crease marks coming off of it. I don't look bad. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Oh, it's it's code for teachers having a day off while still at work day. <laughs> there is interesting. There's some banding, uh, not uh, not very intent. Well, not intentional at all at the moment. Uh, it will be now, but the sort of banding coming off of some of these areas here. That kind of looks like the the uh, skin, you know, the, the wrinkled skin type of effect, and uh, that was looking quite good. I need a bit more work just around here. There's sort of it doesn't look quite right just along the bottom of the tusk. Um, Japanese braid using twenty threads. Wow. That sounds like quite a bit of weaving done there. Weaving. Why does that come? Sorry, the thought just crossed my mind there. Weaving. I actually thought of um, actual weaving. Uh, cloth type weaving with um, you know, a loom based type things and that's, the, that's an image that came to mind uh, not of what you're doing Adi but uh, just when you said it with the 20 threads reminded me that the warp threads that that, that go you know, front to back uh, in, a, in a weaving machine and then you lift them up uh, up and down and, and throw the shuttle backwards and forwards in order to, to form the pattern and I'm just trying to think why on earth that that image triggered in my mind because it seemed to weaving seemed to have some sort of relevance to me, but I can't for the life of me think I've ever done any weaving. I used to have a full a shuttle, an old wooden shuttle, um, but for some reason I've got in my mind that I've done something like weaving, the same technique, but I've, as far as I know I've never done any weaving. Yeah, in the loom, well, okay, yeah, loom frame, but that's weird. It's really weird. Is is this impression I've got in my mind that I've done this, but I can't think why. No, that's a weird thing. Really, really, really weird. Now then, this tool is going to be hot. If it's not been down on the wood for a while, the tool gets hot, and you can you can burn a dark mark unintentionally if you just put it down on the wood. So I have to, you know, like then I have to remember uh, not to just put it down because I'll get a darker mark than I wanted. And the interesting thing is here I'm doing detail left-handed, and what's surprising me. I'm succeeding. <laughs> I 
hey, maybe I've discovered something. Maybe I'm better at doing art left-handed than I am right-handed. Now that would be a surprise. Um, Now that got a bit darker than I intended. I just want to bring this bottom air, bottom area up a little bit. It's a little bit too light around here. I just want to make it bring the darkness up a little bit. So you know, it's it's darker at the bottom because there's there's less light. Um, and it gets lighter as you come up the side of the well, essentially it's a gum really I suppose that's what I was after doing like that and then downwards from here just to get rid of that highlight area there but still leave it slightly lighter now that looks better a little bit just off there which is a bit bright that's better that looks a bit better now in the outgoing stream uh, yeah I did yeah I would have thought that well the discs normally create uh, chords don't they rather than uh, rather than uh, braids unless you're talking about a chord type braid. Uh, there's a thought just crossed my mind. Braid um, to me suggested flat. Hmm. But um, I guess, yeah, a round loom. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to puzzle for the rest of this evening now why I think I've done some weaving when I, I'm almost certain I haven't or what it is that makes that's making me think I have I don't think I've even never had a go on a, a manual loom that's real real weird real real weird um okay fair enough that's what yeah i yeah i was just thinking yeah as you said well not as you said what you said triggered the thought then that i mean all all um a chord is really is a is a tube essentially so if you don't if you don't join the ends of the tube together it becomes a flat piece. Hmm. Hello Junior. You're getting restless. Not very by the looks of him. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so yeah, I was just let's try and hand slightly the happy accident of discovering that I had created banding coming away from these creases
my XY control isn't very good. <laughs> I need more practice at my XY control. I'm doing X and then Y by the looks of it as I'm, uh, I'm drawing this tool around. There we go. I knew we'd probably get tired at some point. You okay? He's going to go now, lay down on the computer, I think. So, we can go back to proper pyrography. I shall move the face cam again. Because there is little point in pointing it at my t shirt. And he has gone and sat down there. I suspect in a moment he'll jump down and he'll go curl up just outside the door, which is where he normally does. Yes, I know you can't take a photograph. This webcam complaining at me. It couldn't take a photograph because in doing this I pushed the button on the top. Yep, he's dumped down. Which is why I didn't bother putting the webcam over there. Right, there we go. Ooh. I'm in real shadow, aren't I? Maybe. Ah, mm, oh dear. Lighting! Terrible thing is lighting. That camera's got a real problem when I do that. <laughs> okay. So now we can actually do some reasonable speed work. And I can actually turn this bag up a little bit. Now that's definitely too light around there. Um, yeah, so let's. Darken this area down here just a bit and then I'll darken the, the darker areas around it. Because underneath here has got to get quite a lot darker. Keep my fingers out of the way of this hot thing on the end of this pen. I haven't burnt myself on this thing yet and I don't intend to be first time. Where the skin is going around there, it's sort of okay. So what I should do ideally is try to keep to move the tool in the skin direction, which is of course 
like this, he says, of course, having just looked it up on my reference picture. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't know. So did everybody enjoy the um, the webcam of uh, of Junior whilst he was around? Or should I not have bothered? This is still a bit cool. Sometimes when you're doing this, it, as I mentioned before, you find bits of wood that just don't really want to colour up. This area just around here was a little tiny area, a bit like that, it just didn't want to take colour. It happens from time to time and uh, it's, it's really just patience and you just keep having to take your time, but you just feel sort of as though it's resisting you. I oh, know that sounds daft. All right, so quite dark. He wants to be. You have to be a little bit careful moving it slowly as, as I was starting to get the problem there. And that is it. It sticks, basically. Uh, we are, as I mentioned before, drawing out either the resin or the sap. I'm not quite sure how you describe it, but a uh, uh, fluid from out of the fibres. And we're cooking that, and it's a bit like a varnish. And uh, it, it sits on the top surface of the, the wood, and of course varnish is sticky and the tool sticks to it and you might have heard me sort of it click as it come off but uh, it's a little bit of a you don't often get it because um, you don't often but I'm getting a little bit now because I'm moving the tool so slowly essentially I could have overcome that by turning the heat up and uh, therefore moving the tool a bit faster but this is not too bad a, a temperature Nobody have any views about the kitty then? I'm 
kind of surprised. I thought kitties ruled the uh, the internet, never mind the world. So that's going to come, sort of, yeah, sort of rounded in like that. So just looking at how they this, I keep calling it the gum line because it kind of is, I suppose, just goes around the tusk. So we get the right perspective uh, view of it. We're creating quite a dark brown here. Don't really want to go any darker than this if I can avoid it because we're getting down to where we start carbonizing wood. And that it sort of is, the wood's a little bit unstable at that point. The carbonization will come off a lot easier. You know, you can just brush it off uh, and then it starts changing shade and things like that. So I don't really like carbonizing if I can avoid it. Um, I can get about a dark, darker still if if really necessary, but as I say, it's a fine line then between that and carbonising, which really is kind of burning wood. Um, It's around that sort of and that. Uh, okay, yeah, I understand what I'm doing now. Well, this will be the first time ever, but. Let's give this a tweak and heat. One of the things with um, using this tool here, flat shader, um, is that you can use the side of it, which is kind of like using a thin flat paintbrush. But one of the things you have to sort of contend with is the side of it is also somewhat like a thin scraper. 
and if you're going over a, an area that you've already done as I, as I do here to keep you know to join it on so to speak then that side that can you know work like a scraper it literally does tend to scrape off the um, the color after all it's kind of like a varnish set on the top and uh, so you have to be careful that you don't make something less dark that you intend it to be dark because you're scraping or even pushing the varnished color away from the area it was in Now I want to be dark around here and as I get up towards where this shadow is I want to just lighten it off. Well the shadow is here and this is a lighter area where where the, um, the there is no shadow so. It is quite an abrupt stop in some ways but don't, uh, well, initially at least, I don't want to make it an abrupt stop. I want to make it uh, sort of fade out a little bit. And then we'll take a look at that and see whether it actually needs to be an abrupt stop. It's a little bit easier to turn a, a, a faded stop into a, an abrupt stop than it is to do the opposite. I'm probably going to fade out towards the back anyway I think here I'm here I am uh, sort of painting what I think rather than what I see from my reference image but kind of doing the opposite to what I say <laughs> so I'm kind of wondering if it's gonna look too dark or not quite Dark, so just basically not too right um, and if I fade it out I can always make it darker so it's, uh, it's a little bit of keeping my options open while I do this I'm wanting to turn this heat up. It probably means that this area of wood is just a little bit resistant. It can be sometimes. Areas of wood can be drier than others. Um, so they, you know, the liquid centre of it sounds like a toffee advert or something. The liquid centre of the uh, the fibres uh, just doesn't uh, come out quite so well. Or it could be just me. <laughs> quite, li quite possibly the latter. It's just me, but it could also be that I'm getting used to um, to the higher heat levels. And that's what's happened in the past. As I've gone working through a piece, I've gradually got used to the higher heat levels until I'm working at quite a high heat level than when I started the piece. Now 
I guess if I um, immediately started another pyrographic piece after I finished one, um, I'd probably be able to work it a lot faster. But I kind of lose a little bit of that skill because I'm not practicing and consolidating it by doing another piece immediately afterwards. Sometimes you can also get the reverse. You can get um, kind of wet wood. That's not fresh wood. It just seems to have more liquid in it. And when you're doing this, you can almost well, you can almost see you're pushing the liquid ahead of the uh, the tool. Let's have a look at um, it. Is um, red? He's trying to make. Oh, it's like a chevron type uh, design. That reminds me of kind of a lizard back. Something like that. And they're, they're a, looks like they're a, are they a nylonish cord? They certainly look shiny. They look a... Mm, yeah, they're, they're a braided cord, aren't they? Um, as well, so they almost look a bit like um, some of the cross stitch uh, anchor threads and things like that, but they're not quite because they're they they're twisted. Not they they look braided to me. They certainly look a bit thicker. Hmm, that's a nice pattern. Congratulations on doing uh, doing a nice pattern. It is embroidery thread. Oh, okay. Well, I was I was right, but I was wrong, because <laughs> I whilst I said it reminded me of that, I didn't think it was. Um, but you got thousands of colours to choose from, then, haven't you? Uh, well, thousands, hundreds of colours to choose from, then, uh, Eddie, when you're doing that, if you're using embroidery threads. Actually, embroidery. Yeah, cross stitch isn't embroidery. It's a slight. There is some slight differences in some of the threads. They're often uh, for embroidery. They often tend to be a little bit more shiny than uh, than cross stitch threads. But uh, and sometimes they're interchangeable. It's a long time since. I've no, I've never done any embroidery. I was about to say it's a long time since I've done embroidery. I've done things like embroidery, which would be um, uh, some tapestry type techniques, uh, where you you will lay one that a thread and then lay another over the top, which isn't embroidery. But uh, yeah, Need to spread this darkness from under here out a bit. Because it has to fade. Now we'll turn it down a bit. I didn't want that mark. So I'll just cool the tool off and then we can uh, just come back in here 
and darken off just under this because this is just around there. I'll join that area to that. So this is underneath the tusk and there's sort of a it goes under and then comes back so it's kind of like a crevice under there but it joins in up here so we kind of lose the darkness gradually as we just come over the top there Okay, DMC, yeah, DMC anchor. Um, at one time I, um, and I still got all those cross stitch stuff. But I actually got a lot of cross stitch kits, but at one time, for no other reason than just collecting them, I, I never did. But I, I kind of wanted to have one of every colour. I mean, they're so, to some extent, they're so pretty. <laughs> you know, all those colours. Don't know if you've ever been into a. A craft shop, or uh, anybody who's watching a craft shop, where you know they do sell things like embroidery and cross stitch threads, like DMC or Anchor, uh, and there's another one as well that I can't recall. But then they have them all hung up on racks, and generally they're all color color graded, so they start at one color and gradually go through the complete rainbow till they get to the other end. And uh, that's <laughs> it's a really colorful display. There's several, I think there's several hundred in the range as well. So there's, you know, if you ever, uh, if you ever sort of trying to create a, a photorealistic image almost, um, provided you've got the scale to do it or you've got small enough stitches, uh, you can almost pick any of you know any colour you like and uh, and get quite close to whatever it is you you're trying to represent. And there's quite a few um, applications out there that'll create cross stitch patterns for you, uh, and use you know a complete range of colours. And uh, you kind of have to be a bit careful though, because uh, their tendency is to use the resolution of the photograph. So if you've just put in a sort of a, a four thousand by six thousand pixel picture, it's a lot of stitches, and you're never going to do that. And it's going to be about twenty foot square, but they look good. <laughs> <laughs> so you then start having to play about and then and then with those applications you know they'll they'll put a color in even if there's only one stitch so then you start after having to sort of work your way th through the applications and uh, the application and start weeding out sort of the one and two stitches and changing them to a color and then working out whether that made a difference to the image at all because sometimes it does uh, just even a single pixel sometimes can make it look odd uh, so sometimes you'll you know you will leave the pixel in but you might substitute a slightly different color where you you're using more stitches of that but yeah at one time especially when these applications first came out there was a lot of people on the internet that would sell you patterns and, and you know of an image and that show you the image that the pattern is of and uh, if you weren't careful you know it'd be a 4000 by 6000 stitch image and uh, given that you know uh, let's say quite quite fine stitch Aida which is what you do cross stitch on um, or one of the materials you do it on a you know 20 24 count is quite high resolution you can imagine 4,000 by 6,000 <laughs> and you'd be using sort of uh, you know 20 bundles of thread for one color and, and you know it's uh, I don't know if you find the same thing with your um, your, your chainmail uh, converter uh, eight program AD, whether it does that same sort of thing. I 
and I was looking at a free uh, a free converter for um, Perla, uh, you know, uh, fuse beads, and I noticed it was kind of doing the same thing, especially if you let it dither an image. Um, you were getting one and two pixels, and not so bad, I guess, with uh, with Perla because you you've got a limited, more limited color palette, and people uh, tend to have all the colors. I say these people that do it a lot. He says of a, having a kit of full colors over there. Um, and I don't do it at all at the moment, but uh, it's still sort of um, the trouble with things like that as well. Is you've got to stand about fifteen feet away from them to see to see what it's supposed to be. So the the trick or the skill with that comes in manipulating either the image or the the output uh, to reduce the number of colours and uh, and actually give you uh, and, and potentially the size to give you the uh, the image that you are trying to achieve uh, an, an easily visible one and what I'm trying to do it here is make sure I don't have a perceived line uh, which is the edge of the and like here for example there's a perceived line you can almost see the dark area um, vanishing a single line I don't want that kind of got to fade out a little bit it's a little bit abrupt Practicing my hand-eye coordination again, <laughs> using the uh, the outgoing stream window as my uh, my screen. Should make that a full, make it a bit bigger. Be able to see it a bit better. Wow! Every every single DMC. I guess she's been collecting them for a while, though, wasn't it? Uh, to do that, I mean, especially the. Um, I think one one. I can't remember what the well last time I looked, sort of one scan, which is probably about thirty yard. I think it's about thirty yards, something like that. I know, and when you're doing cross stitch, you break it up. So, you, the six threads, you generally break them up into twos uh, for cross stitch or. or um, some sort of some of the sewing techniques use three occasionally and very occasionally use one but not very much it's too fine but um, they're about one pound odd it now they're about one pound odd a skein um, and so you can it still adds up mind you <laughs> I can think of some other things not too far away from uh, from this discussion where um, uh, the 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 when you start talking about colours, they soon add up. Okay, now that's looking a little bit more better. A little bit of it's still a little bit abrupt when you're looking at it from the uh, the camera perspective, and the camera is seeing this a lot dark. It's seeing it more like black and white, but uh, that's not too bad. I need to. Sh I get the impression that this should be a little bit more rounded. Following the tusk a little bit more, let me just darken this area down here a bit. Uh, 
bit more just around there. About there. That sort of fades away a little bit more. I think I want this a bit darker, but it sort of fades away a little bit more from underneath there now. But still lets you see where the uh, where the tusk comes in. Yeah, it definitely needs to be a little bit darker, I think. Um, but not too much. Down here, we sort of we probably want down here to be something around this sort of area of colour. Uh, and sort of these areas, but then this is too white at the moment. Definitely too white. But we're getting there, we're getting there. Woo! Lammy, you're, you're a generous family, aren't you? A box that contained one skin of each. Mind you, I guess you're buying in bulk then, so there's maybe a little bit of a discount, but. Wow, lucky person. And then once you've got them, it's you've got to keep them up then. You know, as you use one, you add one or buy two. I think is uh, kind of my, my trick with, with, with things is like that, where I want a full set of something. I'll, I'll, I'll buy a few of each. And then when you want some more, instead of buying just a few to replace the ones you've used, you buy a few plus a few more. And you gradually build up your stock, but uh, nice having every uh, every colour available to you. That's um, that's that's quite nice when you're doing it. You're doing it not to have to suddenly. Um, oh, I want just a slightly different colour for whatever reason, and you have to then go to a shop and invariably you forget to take the one that you're trying to get close to, and then you have to guess which one it was. <laughs> oh dear. I'm quite liking that. Well, I'm quite liking it on the output stream. I'm not. I'm still. And I'm, what I'm trying to say is, I'm not not liking it <laughs> in real life. I do like it in real life. Uh, as I'm putting in sort of the, the, you know, getting more of the colour in, odd little bits of detail like that, and and around here, um, it's it's coming more alive for me here in in person uh, than it was before. But I must admit, using using the OBS window, I mean, it's a trick I'm going to have to do even when I'm not streaming, is just fire OBS up and stick it on preview. And actually use that and just look at it, because the camera gives me a sort of a, a six foot view. When it, you know, Usually, after with an artwork, I have to stand back, and a lot of mine actually always looks better to me from a distance. Um, and the trunk now looks somewhat like a trunk and not like an eye. <laughs> For those that were uh, here on earlier streams when I was saying it kind of resembled an eye to me. Sort of a bit like um, a pelican that's lost its uh, lost its beak. <laughs> this is still a bit a bit heavy, I think, compared to the rest. I need to darken the rest off a little bit and fade it in. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to actually change much of the colour of the trunk. I think I'm quite liking that at that sort of level. And I think I'm going to use that as the elephant's grey. Uh, and just work on variations from that. Because that's working quite well. I think I'm a bit, perhaps a bit light around here. So I may have to just darken off this. Seeing it in person, it's a, it's a little bit light. There's not a lot of contrast. Although if I... Um, if I apply a darker background, sort of like a sunsetish sort of background, sort of you know dark down here up to lighter up the top, because um, the horizon is probably about here. So you know a, a, a graduation, a, gra a graduated sky up there, then this in itself actually won't be too dark. It will actually be uh, com possibly come out too light. Yeah. So it won't be it won't be too light. It it may change its colour anyway. Um, in terms of because uh, you'll be comparing it to the darker background, which actually might suit because it is supposed to be sunlit.
Yeah, it does, doesn't it, Gaia? I'm, I am. Uh, it, it's 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 something that I picked up on when I did uh, Junior, and um, I needed to do it again when I did uh, Felix. That's the two uh, the two pussy cats. I needed that that base color of everything, and the elephant here has kind of proved the same thing again. I needed that base color. As I'm looking at that more, um, I'm starting to see things like this, and and I'm looking at the image on the on the screen rather than down here, and then have to come back and look at this. But this is this is really kind of looking like a shadow to me now. This this area here, the way it just comes straight off off this particular well, that's what it's meant to be, of course. But as it comes just off this tusk area. Um, it, it's really looking like a shadow um, and, and underneath yeah the coloration is coming in quite nicely now mm, the only the only thing I'm thinking just thinking about here is this tusk of course uh, uh, ivory isn't white it's kind of a cream color but even on uh, in in contrast and and uh, as the elephants rub them they sort of and the bleach a little bit in the sun so they're kind of a white um but it's kind of dirty as well you know as they rub on trees and they get you know like you rub on bark and things like that and um i'm just wondering how i'm going to color that because it would have to be a lot lighter than well generally speaking a lot lighter than this otherwise you'll lose lose the edge so I may have to darken the trunk off a bit, maybe sort of make it a subtle graduation, because I don't, I mean, I'm liking this a bit. Ah, Bubbles the Monkey, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. And you're going to, you need some, I think I'm probably going to need some sleep. I am actually stopping, Eddie, so you're not going to miss anything. In fact, actually, I'm going to put the pyro tool down. So Bubbles, I'm afraid you, uh, you just popped in probably right at the last minute. Uh, I'm just sort of um, saying the sort of thing that I, I'm looking, what I'm seeing on this, and uh, and where I think I need to do some more work, and uh, um, to some extent, kind of how pleased I am about it. I'm actually wondering just how dark I want to make the body. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I've got I've got work in the morning. I start at nine o'clock ish. Um, and I know for me it's it's about a 10 second journey to work but <laughs> I, I do need to be awake um, I'm wondering just how whether how dark I want this to be um, and whether or not yeah it's probably it's probably about this sort of level of darkness Yeah, I'm getting some bounce light on here, so I probably this this area probably wants to be about this dark, leaving this about this light, because it's kind of the ears are reflecting light. So this this area of the face is is lightening up, but the body down here, of course, is is in shade from the head. Um, and whilst there is a shadow, it's it's off here. You know, the edge of the shadow is off the screen, so this is going to be quite dark. And I might put that in might put that in tomorrow we've of course got the edge of an ear up here as well which I could do perhaps with putting in because um, it kind of looks earless <laughs> as opposed to armless um, I am gonna have to do something more, some more coloring on that head if only just to mind you the background again uh, the background could push that out I'm starting to wonder whether I should do some of the background as well, but we've got the got the um, giraffe. We're possibly getting to the point where I'll stop. I'll stop the elephant for a while. Do the, do some of the giraffe to at least get the outline in, uh, and then and then some of the background graduation. As I say, I would like to sort of get quite dark here, uh, fading up. Now, quite dark is probably going to have to stay away from this, or at least maybe at the bottom end. I can go this dark, but I, but by the time I get up to here, I want to be lighter, lighter than this. As I come up, otherwise I'll lose. 
Well, I suppose I can be I can be darker than this, but yeah, I've got to have a contrast. Is is what I mean? I've got to have a difference. Otherwise, you'll tend to lose it. Now, in real life, you that sort of thing does happen, but it doesn't work so well in pyrography unless there's a clear line that you can see. And I suppose you could do because we've got a dark edge and a light edge here. You'd see the line even if it even if it wasn't really there. And we can kind of cheat a little bit as well because yeah, you know, it's a living ear. It, it'll curve. Well, it has. It's it's flopped over, so it could curve a little bit, creating a shadow. So we can sort of do some cheats like that. So maybe that's what I'll, I'll do. Do a bit more. Do the do the outline at least of the giraffe. And then, and then start to establish a graduation coming up here, even if it's only a, a very light one. And we can then start to see: do we, do I actually need to do anything more on this head uh, to distinguish it from the background, or whether there's enough, there'll be enough colour in the background for you to clearly see that this is in front and lighter. Talking of implied lines, by the way. I suspect you can see one around here just coming off that tip there down and then being picked up again here across the top of the ear most people can see can see that so it's like a light edge of the ear and of course it's an optical illusion <laughs> um, it, it's done on purpose but it's um, there is no line you, your eye just follows the dark through uh, Yeah, so that, maybe that's the plan of action uh, for you know, tomorrow. Is to uh, to do that. You missed the pussy cat, by the way, Bubbles to Monkey. We had um, we had a visit from uh, from Junior, so we had cat cam uh, for uh, probably about twenty twenty five minutes, uh, and you therefore missed me doing pyrography left handed, uh, which was successful but um, a challenge. Uh, but uh, yeah oh and, and whilst we're talking about bubbles to monkey there guys anybody who's watching i do recommend you check out bubbles to make monkey be that sounds naughty uh, check out bubbles to monkeys channel uh bubbles does uh, fuse beads perla and the other manufacturers but fuse beads and makes uh, sprites and uh, and l very large pictures as well um, have you finished your current uh, one? Whose name again escapes me, uh, Bubbles the Monkey. Um, but I do recommend that you guys check her out. Check out her channel doing that art form. It's fascinating to watch as it builds up pixel by pixel. Anyway, I'm going to say good night. I'm going to say thank you to everybody that's watching uh, and has been watching tonight. Although if you have been watching, you're not watching now, so you wouldn't know. So it's kind of pointless. But anyway. If you go away, you'll have known that I've said goodnight to you, even though you weren't here. Shall I show up and just say thank you? <laughs> it's getting late. I'm getting tired. I'm rambling. Anybody who is watching and isn't following, I do, of course, encourage you to do so. Um, and you are, of course, quite welcome to follow me on Twitter. I do have a Twitter. It's below the stream window, but it's at Zaraganat. I tweet when I go live, not what I have for breakfast. Uh, just in case you were wondering and uh, if you just want to catch me uh, on the next stream without any uh, technological assistance then you are quite welcome to do so i start streaming generally at around 20 hundred hours in the uk that's 1900 hours gmt and if you're feeling lazy and don't want to ask google what time that is in your own time zone take a look at your clock you've probably got one on the tablet pc or phone that you're watching me on and subtract about two and a half hours from it i know that's a bit early but two and a half hours from it that would be 8 p.m in the uk that time tomorrow night and the night after and the night after and assuming i don't have anything that stops me streaming it's that time each night in the meantime Lizard Sill, Grier, Bubbles to Monkey, Eddie Fall Guy, everybody else who may be uh, around. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you on the next stream. Bye bye.